Good day, everyone, and welcome to St. Anthony Catholic Church. Today is the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. This Mass is offered for Dolores Shanton and the repose of the soul of Don Shanton and Shirley Pavlicek, and for Dean Cabanas, who is celebrating his 15th birthday. Let us take a moment to consciously acknowledge that we are in the presence of God and to ask him to help us to hear what he wants to say to us today. In today's first reading, the Jewish sage Sirach teaches that speaking is the test of men and their character. One who is upright will utter words that are truthful and encouraging to others, but one whose heart is cluttered with refuse will be exposed since the fruit of his mouth speaks volumes about the tree that produces it. Just as an orchard is judged by the quality of its fruit, so a person's words show us what kind of person he or she is. We are urged to make wholesome speech a habit. In today's second reading, Paul concludes his teaching on the resurrection. Through Jesus' resurrection, death and sin have been overcome. Death has its sting, which is sin. It is this venom of sin which destroys life and leads to final death. But Christ has defeated the power of sin and so has taken the sting out of death. If we are to share in this victory and live forever with the Lord, then we must take all steps necessary to give our hearts and lips to what, it, what is good. Today's Gospel is a continuation of Jesus' Sermon on the Plain. In the parable about the plank in one eye, one's eye, the disciple who admits no personal faults is no better than a blind guide. His influence is useless to others. But if the disciple makes an effort to be like his teacher Jesus, his actions will be beneficial for himself and others. The disciple whose eyes are focused on Jesus, is like a healthy fig tree producing good fruit. His words and deeds have integrity, which can influence others to be faithful followers of Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, who taught us not to judge, but to trust in your judgment, help us to humble ourselves, that we may banish all haughtiness from our hearts and love one another as you have loved us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in number 560. Oh, bless the Lord.
brothers and sisters, we're called today to be one in Christ. Let us pause for a moment to reflect the times of our lives we have forgotten what it means to be one with each other, to reconcile, to live in peace with each other. For these times, let us ask the Lord for his pardon mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault. Through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to be all is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. Thank you. 
They that have planted the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. They shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be. with incorruptibility, and this, which is mortal, clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Okay. Thanks be to God. but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own. How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter from in your eye, but you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye. You hypocrites, remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For people do not pick fig tree, figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person out of store of goodness in his heart produces good, but an evil person out of store of evil produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Does it, all, does it seem to you at times that world leaders don't know what they're doing? <laughs> that they're clueless, that they're blinded to the suffering of other people, of an ordinary man on the street, or woman, or child. And all they do is self-interest, and as a result, they bring a lot of suffering and pain. And yet they're quick to criticize each other and quick to look at their own, you know, their, what's going on in their policy, what's going on in their own country. 
But before we get so critical with world leaders, don't we do the same in our own life? Yeah. That we oftentimes don't even look at our own life and we're quick to judge each other. Yeah. And Jesus is calling us to un unity, to be one in him. You know, and be one with one another. It's easy to say, yeah, I'm in union with God. But it's a bit harder, isn't it? To be united with one another. I mean, to, because united, to say we are one. Does it happen when you say we are one? No, no it takes... It takes, first of all, intention and desire to know each other, to understand each other, to seek to know the other person before one speaks and to look at oneself, the faults and failing of oneself to reconcile each other. And it's a challenge for us to do that. We're called, likewise, to do always the same in our life. And so this, today I present to you a message with unity for our Archbishop the, at the Archbishop's appeal. He wants to talk about the unity of the church and where we're going today. Oh, I forgot to tell you one point before we continue the video. Is that, you know, we all have a, a part to play in unity. Oftentimes we're frustrated what's going on in the world. But, you know, unity starts with us. Recently, a doctor in Alabama in December of this past year, of this past year, went to Ukraine to adopt a child, a nine-year-old boy, and he fell in love with the child, he and his wife, and they, they're looking forward to bringing him over to the United States, their child, everything, well, it's gonna take time. They're hoping to get him come to America by December, you know, how long paperwork and visa and all that course. And of course, now everything has gone up in a, with the Ukraine situation, in the invasion, it's going to be a lot harder. And he, the doctor says, you know, he was really impressed by this, orf, by this orphan boy. He took him to grocery shopping, and the boy asked for a pack of gum. So he said, okay, I'll get you a gum. And probably after paying for the gum, he took the gum, the gum out and giving the gum up to the, the cashier and the person behind him in line. And... And when he went back to the orphanage, he probably gave all the gums out to his friends in the orphanage. And the doctor was greatly amazed when he got back to the car. He found three sticks of gum on the dashboard of the, of the car that he left there. And you know, this little boy, nine years old, one could arguably say he's had an unjust, life wasn't fair to him. He lost both parents. He's an orphan in a very poor country, and now he's in a very terrible situation. But yet he saw the goodness of others. He wasn't thinking about himself in his own situation. And I wonder, you know, if the little boy could do that. What does that say about a person that is, that, that we, that because we're made in the image of God, there's goodness in each person. And there's goodness in each and every one of us. And the question is, are we able to see that in each other, in ourselves? And now I present to you our Archbishop's Appeal movie. Peace to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Despite our recent challenges, actually, the Catholic community here in Western Oregon is more connected and more united than we have been in a long time. There's been a tremendous effort on the part of our priests, our parish staffs, and our volunteers to make sure that faith is nourished and actually flourishes in our local parish communities. These times that we're going through, these are not unique times. When you look back through history and you see the struggles, you see the persecutions of the early Christians, you see the, the Reformation. We have gone through so many things like this, yet the church endures. When I see difficulties like this, I look for where can we expand, where can we grow? Because I work a lot of times with sacramental prep, the work kind of has to be in person. 
So it was um, a conversation with some families and then for the families that were ready to come back, preparing for the sacraments is just a joy um, and it's so fun to reach that time of you know excitement and see these kids excited to meet Jesus in that way. The parishioners were calling me, coming by the rectory, uh, asking whether there was anything I needed. Uh, some were uh, bringing the groceries, some were sending letters. The support was not only from the parishioners and the staff and the people around, but from the Archbishop, uh, who was always there. We felt that we were all together in this as a team, collaborating. I really appreciate the Archbishop's effort to promote unity among the clergy. Uh, he has reached out in many ways by Zoom conference with the, all the priests and with the local vicars uh, throughout the Archdiocese. And I know it's not just words, it isn't just words, he sincerely means that. He sincerely wants us to be, to speak with one voice, one mind. I really appreciate his call for unity among the presbyterate and unity that way then, unity among the people of God. That's the spirit of Jesus who prayed for unity in his church. When I think about that, I, in, in this small parish here in, in Taggart, Oregon, am part of this larger universal church that's being guided and shepherded by the Archdiocese of Portland and our Archbishop Sample, that just gives me a glimpse into what heaven is going to be like. I'm going to encounter God, you know, face to face, and I'm also going to be part of this huge, you know, cloud of witnesses that are also part of my, my family. It made me very comfortable when I first came here from Vietnam. I uh, didn't speak much English, but then I thought, well, everything very familiar. I, I would go to church and I knew exactly what the next part is. Um, so I, I think that's the great thing of the Universal Catholic Church, that we are one. I just want people to know that, that we are part of a great archdiocese and that there is, you know, sometimes conflict. There are obviously differences of opinions, but the church should never be divided. We should never be separated from one another. I think it's important that we do all we can to support our archdiocese, to lift up our leaders, to lift up Archbishop Sample in prayer, Bishop Peter in prayer, and our archdiocese, because my brothers and sisters, we are not some separate entity. We all must be together and ask the Spirit to guide us on this journey. Accompaniment and listening to one another is really the hallmark of our journey together. My brothers and sisters, we are entering into a two-year synodal process where we will walk together and listen to one another and ask ourselves the fundamental question, where is the Holy Spirit leading the church today in this great work of evangelization? My brothers and sisters, we were made for this time and for this place to be those witnesses of the gospel, those missionary disciples that Pope Francis so frequently calls us to be. I ask you, please, to support this year's Archbishop's Catholic Appeal because it is through your generosity that we are able to carry on this tremendous work that Jesus has given to us in his church. My brothers and sisters, please pray for me as I so often pray for you. May God bless you, your families, your loved ones, all those who are dear to you now and forever. Feel free.
free to drop these Archbishop's Appeal envelopes in the regular collection. We'll, be, we'll sort them out anytime during Lent, so no hurry, but there's extra envelopes in the pews in case you didn't get one at home. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our sin and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified upon the side. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accord with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And I see you in my Amen. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the greatest of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the earth and the life of the world to come. Amen. As a people of faith, we pray for our enemies and want only the best for all people. Faced with great, this great challenge, we present these prayers to God. That the church humbly accept just criticisms and always look for ways to better proclaim the gospel of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That peoples of every nation deepen a commitment to civil speech and through family practice cultivate the minds of all young people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That society may continue to value the contribution of the elderly and seek new ways for wisdom to be shared among the generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That our parishioners at St. Anthony's will recognize the Archbishop's Catholic appeal as an opportunity to thank God for his goodness and blessings in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who are facing death may have the strong support of family and community and be assured of the victory that awaits the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our own personal and special intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us thank you, Lord, our God. Through these prayers, profess, with, to profess your steadfast love for us, confident that you hear and answer all our needs. We ask to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join us in 385, the summons. Number 385. <laughs> Thank you. 
Pray, dearly beloved, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of the Holy Church. O oh God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name, and count our oblation as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. 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 Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by His birth He brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by His suffering canceled out our sins, and by His rising from the dead, He has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, He has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as if our end we acclaim. more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Remember, Lord, your church. Spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy, 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all of the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit be called heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory is yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I need you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other signs.
very blessed week because in addition to daily Mass, we also have special Mass on Wednesday. That's Ash Wednesday. Join us Mass for 9 o'clock Mass for, to, uh, to begin Lent, the season of Lent. Also, remember also at 11 o'clock we have Bible study through Zoom session. So do join us online for the Bible study. But wait, that's not over yet. <laughs> Friday, we have also the Healing Mass. Join us, Mass for 9 o'clock, Adoration and Benediction afterwards. So do join us on Friday. What a great way to begin Lent, see? I don't know if you guys can go sleep anymore. I should have told you that. Now you got all excited. I don't know if I can sleep, wait till Friday, until next week. But do try to go to sleep. That's not my intention at all. Also, remember... Join us um, if, to share your story with testimonies. It's so important in the world that we live in, the broken world, that the world needs hope. And your story can bring a lot of hope to people. So I just invite you to share your story via guest columnist. If you have suffered, seen a great insight, God has shown you a, something that really touched your heart, you be sure to be shared with us to be a guest columnist. Send your article to Pam. Also, remember, if you have an upcoming wedding anniversary, let us know so we can rejoice and celebrate with you. Rice bowl. <coughs> rice bowl. Yes, we also have the rice bowl for you to pick up at the end of Mass. Don't worry, they'll, they'll get it one way or the other. <laughs> they'll get it. Also, remember, we are always a parish toward new improvement. So, for the first time ever, we have Mass Intention online. Which means you, you have the option to go old school if you want with the, with the envelopes out there. And, but however, we also have online, which means on our website, you can make requests online and donate online through credit card. Talk about 21st century, are we moving forward now? <laughs> so that's available for you on our website under the prayer section. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in this present age, you may make us partaker of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, to love, and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who want up around the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you for joining us in song and celebration. Our final song is number 474, Fly Like a Bird.